everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth, where I talk to artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. Today, we're back with two special guests, uh, Creative Truth alumni, my best buds, Matt and Andrew. Let's give it a round of applause. <laughs> so I have both your <laughs> LinkedIn's pulled up, so i doing my homework. Um, it says here that you're a reporter in Hollywood, Matt. No, you're no. not making that up. Oh, what do you do again? I work. You, my ass, you have my resume or LinkedIn pulled up. I do. Oh, it says billboard. Okay. So no, no. Tell it. Tell the listeners. Tell listeners what you do. I. It's definitely not just listed as billboard. I definitely source and log B-roll content from script provided by supervisor. Thank are you. you for re- are you reading your resume it's, right now? Yes. He's reading his LinkedIn. Because yes, thank you for telling us. This Thank just you for telling us. Our video department split, so now TA like the Hollywood Reporter and Billboard are completely separate. Uh, I when I was doing both brands, I was doing red carpets and stuff like that, but that's pretty much over with now. We still do red carpets, but it's more like award shows, like the Grammys, uh, the Country Music Awards are this Sunday or tomorrow. So we'll be doing the red carpet for that. They'll deliver you the stuff, right? Yeah. Assets. And I'm like, how's that? How do they, how, I mean, what do you do with it? And how does that process look like? And what do you end up churning out for them? Uh, how does the process of them emailing me a script look like? <laughs> they email me a script and then footage. Uh, or like, then I get the footage and then I just build a piece in Premiere. It's like very... Uh, it's very like streamlined and like for the editors who are listening, like they know like that's as easy as it can get, you know, there are none listening. Don't worry. Yeah. No one's listening. (laughs) Uh, Wait, I have a question. Pause. Yeah. Cut this, cut this. Okay. All right. I'll just, when, when Matt's talking, can you see me? Yes. We're a three up. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Resume. Okay. Time in. Yeah. He's not gonna edit this at all. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh but I'm glad you asked because yeah, I don't want you like showing your ass to the camera when Matt's <laughs> in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> so all right. So then but Matt, where's your stuff going? Like mostly social or are you also doing like TV and OTT and advertising and all that kind of stuff? Um it's just as far as I know, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, pretty much all socials. Uh, you said OTT, you mean like pre-roll ads or something? Yeah, like Hulu, Netflix, not Netflix, but any. Spray. Well, no, I that that we are the vehicle for like the pre-roll ads to play and stuff like that. And because it's like a show with like the only thing like we're billboard is like uh equivalent to like an ign or buzzfeed or a, like a plat uh, a publication like that so they'll hold advertisements themselves and same goes for billboard uh i don't know if we have advertisements playing before other videos but probably not <laughs> Thank you for telling us what you do. Andrew, it says it says here that you are a composter. What is that? Yeah, I I shovel shit and polish shit and <laughs> wow. make things uh look nicer. Okay, again, I'm gonna be bleeping out all of this. Thanks for making me do more work. Um but uh <laughs> But no, Andy, Andy, you just said you're going to edit this. I'm going to have to now. I wasn't going to (laughs) cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. I I forgot I muted myself, but that was (laughs) and Tyler and I were still moving. and he was completely frozen. You guys are I was like talking to Tyler's face and he was just like. So, so tell us tell us what what kind of projects you've been you've been doing lately your compositor uh, not not a composer yeah i'm a compositor i work in visual effects for television film advertising um but 
but you're on the good side. You're, you're an indie, uh, indie, uh, you know, you're self-employed, you know, you're not a W2 guy. You're just out there finding gigs, right? Yeah. I'm mostly uh freelance. I did have, I did file a W2 this year, but yeah, it's mostly freelance. Um, what was the question? <laughs> 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 what you do that's what i do yep. okay any big credits that you're proud of that you've worked on in uh since in the last two years oh oh, oh oh okay um let's see i've worked on <clears throat> more recently we wrapped up uh working on a show that's coming out on amazon called i'm a virgo uh mm-hmm. directed by boots riley it's uh live action but I work with uh, a stop motion company called Mystery Meat Media in Oakland, and um, they did stop motion segments for the show. So I worked on those, doing compositing, like removing the rigs and plussing up the shots, adding little effects and stuff like that. Um, And before that... uh, I worked on The Gray Man on Netflix. I worked on, well, that was a pretty long one. Um, How long uh, did it take and what was your like main thing you were doing or what were some of the stuff you're working on for that one? For that one, we did like all of the computer screens and TV monitors in the movie, like pretty much all of them. Um, And so we were just replacing those out. They were like, they had some onset graphics uh, to ma- to match look to, but they mostly just uh, wanted new graphics added, so we had to put those on. Um, I don't know how technical you want me to get. Um, well, I am a little interested. Like, if some if if somebody just has like a black phone or a green phone, it's not just like putting a rectangle there. You got to actually like fake the light that's coming off of it, right? Yeah, there's a few things. Um, a lot of people will do like a green green phone or something, but it's actually better to have a black phone because then you don't have to worry about removing the green. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so it it's you'll have to match move or like object track the phone itself um, because that will be moving on different axes from the camera. And then you have to set it back into the scene. So like match the grain, match the lighting and all that stuff match the the way that it would look and sometimes they have onset reference like sometimes they will have like a real screen on the phone that's like someone in graphics like whipped up but it's not like the final graphics it's like temp so you can kind of see what it should look like Mm -hmm. and they'll maybe do some of the same colors that we coming off of it yeah you'll do like uh you'll like a big thing is like comparing the black levels like you want the RGBs and the black levels to be consistent. And it's really, it's a lot of like really subtle things, but they're very ingrained in the industry is like, no one will notice most of what we do, but we do it. (laughs) Yeah. If you're doing it right, no one will know, you know, people, people always complain about like bad special effects, but usually it's like a time or budget constraint. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And then one thing you mentioned too is like, like if somebody's moving in front of a screen, getting that to kind of, you know, like with motion blur and stuff like that, that's where it gets tricky. Yeah. Yeah. If someone moves in front of the screen, uh, that's where it gets into a headache because then it does help to have the screens be green so you can key out their hair and stuff like that. So it's, it's a whole bunch of conditions. It's like, it's easier if this happens in the shot, but it's actually harder if this happens in the shot to do it that way. So yeah, sometimes it's set up in different ways. So some of them were green screens where they were passing in front of the, like the TV. And then it was just painstakingly keying out hair. Uh, The way you'll typically do it in like higher budget productions is you'll do like multiple keys, like rather than just pulling one key, you'll like zoom in on like, this section of the hair and you'll pull a key there and then you'll combine it with the key for up here, key for up here. It takes forever. Um, but that's how you get a better key. And with motion blur. Yeah. That 
that can be a pain in the ass too. <laughs> but uh, you have to match the motion blur, blur to focus. And sometimes they'll have like uh, measurements so you can like technically match the actual defocus that's in the shot. But sometimes you just have to do it by eye. Yeah, and it might take six months, but it's worth it to fast forward to the end of the movie to see your name in the credits, right? <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, they're they're joking because I was supposed to get credits on the Gray Man, and I I went to see the movie in theaters to like get my <laughs> see him, and I wasn't in it. The producer like uh, absentmindedly left me out of the co- the call sheet or whatever. <laughs> um we won't say the production company's name but it's all good though i'm on i'm on other uh netflix uh credit roles now in the form of less prestigious lol lol surprise dolls fashion winter week mondays or something (laughs) i don't know what it's called but it's the lol surprise movie i worked on that that was also stop motion um do you have to like the content of what you're working on or do you just not care what it is? Um, I don't really care because for, from like for my work, it's so uh, like zoomed in. Like I don't even like hear the audio or anything. It's just like one shot at a time. So I have like very little idea of what I'll work on things and I'll have no idea what's like happening until I see it like finished during a cut i'll be like oh that makes so much more sense now (laughs) so how the hell did we all like go to school for the same stuff and end up doing the same kind of thing i i don't know i guess we're weak willed and we (laughs) probably well i think i don't know It, it just seemed fun like back in high school it seemed like the most fun elective thing to do and yeah I agree with that. uh, Not only that, but in some ways it was the most wise thing to do because of like how from when we were in high school to present day, like how much media has kind of exploded. Whereas like, like other uh, jobs were, I don't know. We could have all gone to school to be like doctors or lawyers or something like that. And like, I I can only speak for myself. Like I avoided accumulating a ton of debt. uh, And then I managed to hang on just long enough to get a job in my field, which is I think rare, but all of us have kind of achieved that as well. So like what Matt said, it, it did just seem like the most fun, like, of all the classes like english class math class physics then like just screwing around in fortes with like a video camera or like editing on premiere was way more fun (laughs) and then you know we were doing like the skateboarding videos and the trick shot videos and i don't know it was just more fun i guess and then we were all kind of broke boys for a while there but finally it's like all right you can actually make some money doing this stuff well, that's like just like a trial and tribulation thing, I think, because there's no offense to anybody I went to college with or like high school with who also went into this and are not working in a working in this industry presently. Like you got to just kind of like hold on for like a couple of years and then a, like do some like lower level work and then work your way up to, you know proving yourself in a way to like for like companies or the film industry or like the VFX industry to say like, Hey, I'm, I am, I can work in this industry. And yeah. Like, that's, that's kind of the, I guess, negative side is like, you can, you can be capable of whatever, but you're going to have to earn your, your grit and everything to pay your dues. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. But at a certain point, then you can just kind of take control of your se- of where things are going, I guess. But when you first get out of college, it kind of sucks. <laughs> Have you guys done anything independent, like any indie work for yourself uh, in the last couple of years? And if so, why or why not? 
no, nothing, nothing for myself for quite a, you know, a couple of years. Yeah, I haven't really either, like little things on Instagram or whatever. And I've like written some things that I wanted to do, but I haven't done them yet. Um, yeah, once you're like working for other people, it just it becomes you become less bandwidth able to do stuff for yourself, I guess. I don't know. But I, I do want to uh, just shoot some little videos and whatnot because I've been, I've been thinking about that more recently. Like, I think I've gotten a little precious about my work, but I kind of want to go back to just like pooping out videos. That was fun, you know? <laughs> well, that's kind of like the the only thing I'm doing really is the podcast because I can I can bullshit for a half hour, you know? It's I just hit record. And then I have interesting people, interesting guys like you on. Yeah, they were you trick us. So, like, so you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. And like when you get up on a Saturday morning and <laughs> don't watch talk about <laughs> it's 5 30 no, on Saturday morning. No Jackie Chan adventures, no yeah. Saturday morning cartoons. You need to come on and get interviewed by me. I, so so the thing I'm gonna mute is, myself because I don't feel very I, like I, I have more questions for you. I want to talk I, about some of you. It Look, said only, it's only to 5.30 and it's 5.34. Yeah, it's because Andy took... Uh, well, okay. Time's right, up. Matt, Matt has time's to go. Up. Matt has to go. <laughs> we, 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 we. No, Matt, I was going to say, like, you also are, you're like a big drawer. You're a good cook. You know, you're just a real creative guy. And I like that you do that stuff in your free time. And I love that you're in your little is, hobbit hole. Is this right? podcast, is this creative truth still? Or yes. whatever? I think yes. it's an is this an April Fool's Day joke? I feel like this is a fucking <laughs> April Fool's joke. I do I have a lot of those hobbies and like I do that for like I guess my like I don't know. Like not that doesn't have any influence on my work at all, like doing that I, stuff. I think it does, but you don't realize it. Like I think what Matt's trying to say is he's just naturally is interested in those things and just naturally is inspired by the things that he does because those are his hobbies and interests i guess right sure. yeah <laughs> thank you andrew that's a great, you're welcome that's a great point do you yes. want me to ask the next next question <laughs> well and, andrew what are some tyler, of... it's gonna take tyler like eight hours to edit. i'm <laughs> tyler i want you to now what like what what do you do for work what do i do for work yeah, yeah i don't i don't know what you do i want a definitive answer and for this this uh open case to be closed or like this mystery to be to be resolved what i want on the record do not cut this what do you do for work i'm a mere lowly cameraman a humble, simple folk. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> With a camera and a eight-year-old desktop. Um, I uh, I make I make social media videos, and I do some of them run OTT advertising, and I also do anything that'll pay me money. That's creative and fun for myself. And I have a very successful podcast called The Creative Truth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry for laughing. Does that answer your question? Yes. Oh, now, okay, good. good. Uh, what do you do in your what free time that inspires you? Mm, great question, Matt. Thank you for asking. I don't know. I play guitar. Lately, I've been I've been eating better. I've been cooking and I've been uh, working on my diet and exercising a little bit. I spend time with my puppy dog. Uh, I play a lot of guitar. I play guitar for probably like an hour a day. And I, I've been doing French lessons for six months now every day. And sometimes I paint, but I haven't in a while. But then the only other thing I do is I work on houses with my hands. I was painting today. That's why I have paint all over me. Let me let me close out the let me close out the creative truth and then we can I'll stop the recording and then we could 
we're not gonna wrap up what what was the point of this what <laughs> i'm gonna make a full episode about this it's just gonna abruptly end on what are your inspirations so it's like one half like serious like what do you do for a living like business talk well, we did we, you, we then... did that we did that in the last episode where you guys were at like i was interviewing you more so we don't need to rehash that too much I was I I didn't think that was going to be hashed out at all, and I'm not. I mean, the, do what you want with this, but I was just we were misled. All right, well, how can people learn more about you guys? <laughs> you go first, Andrew. <laughs> just dead silence. Uh, how can you learn more about me? Um, I guess you can go to my Instagram, which I have not updated in a minute, but. It is handle visual dot baker. And I have a website and a blog that I don't update. Basically just I don't know. You probably shouldn't. You should probably shouldn't it. Great answer. What about you, Matt? I again <laughs> I don't want people learning about me. I just wanted to talk to my two friends. I didn't know this was like a I guess people can learn more about me at uh, my website, mdamiano.com, which I haven't updated in two years. So there, <laughs> I don't know why you're asking people like what my like, you know, credentials are like when I went to college, where I went to college and, you know, where, thanks, where did you, where did you go to college? <laughs> in upcoming episodes of the creative truth i'm going to be talking to more artists entrepreneurs and creative professionals to help this isn't creative truth <laughs> this isn't creative truth this was <laughs> this, this is the creative truth this no is it's not you <laughs> lied to us <laughs> what are you talking about you fucking tricked us <laughs> <laughs> this was supposed to be like a friendly fun i thought we were gonna like talk about video games or something like that like we oh well what video games inspire you oh <laughs> <laughs> to help us go over their path to success if you have episode feedback or guest suggestions <laughs> send them to we create truth at gmail.com hit the like on iTunes, give us a advertising like hit the like button <laughs> hit the like share and subscribe hey, oh my god <laughs> Smash and we'll see like we'll button. see you in the next episode of the creative truth thanks it's for listening not creative truth <laughs>